I'm Marcus Maddox, this is Hokage. So and all the other boys, you know? Alberto Santo Mundo! Do you want to kick your butt? You wish. Ah. Oh. He has beer fingers. Um, yeah. Happy 50th. Uh, yeah, thing. Episode. Enjoy that. Right? Yeah. Happy 50th episode. Happy 50th episode. Now, I was a little skeptical about meeting John Swayze. I'm not really a fan of his voice acting, but he was in Soul Eater, and I actually admired his acting in Darker Than Black. So when I heard he was at AFO, I thought to myself, all right, what the heck, let's just go check him out. For the wonderful John Swayze here. Um, he is the voice of Gendo Ikari from the newly updated Evangelion, and um, Tons of amazing stuff. One piece, one of my no favorites, Sergeant Frog. No way. Excuse Frog. me one second. No <laughs> way. Oh my god. <laughs> oh! Oh! Yeah. Woo! Oh, this is my wife. <laughs> yeah! Dang, the change turned out so good. <laughs> Man, what a great treat. No, no, the long story, long story, but it's. Give us the reader's uh, That was awesome. Yeah. I gotta get it. We gotta get photos and video and all kinds of drawings or whatever later. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously you're in the update version of Evangelion. Did you, like, are you familiar with the original? Like, what was that translation? Well, I'm very like? familiar with the original because um, I have the dubious honor of, <laughs> you know the show Bewitched? Yeah! You know how Dick York was the original Darren and then Dick Sargent became the new Darren? Mm -hmm. I'm Dick Sargent. <laughs> but not just for that, but also for Hohenheim in Full Metal Alchemist. So I replaced Scott McNeil in Full Metal Alchemist, and I replaced Tristan McCavery in the original, uh, as Gendo, in the original version of um, uh, Evangelion. And, uh, you know, it's one of those things you're like, okay, you know, because for me, it's like, well, great, I'd love to do it. It sounds fine. They're like, well, here's the thing. <laughs> Some people may hate your guts for it, you know, because you know you 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 find a character and you oh I love that character why did they change him you know so. Do you enjoy what do you enjoy I mean do you find that you enjoy one more than the other like acting on screen as opposed to being behind the mic? I enjoy being behind the mic better because I can go to work like this. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Um, I enjoy it all, but yeah, I think I really, I love voice work. I just, I love it because you can, you know, first of all, I have a face for voice work, so. Aww. You, Aww. Oh, come on, I'm kidding, I'm kidding, I'm gorgeous. But, uh, <laughs> no, I'm just, I'm uh, no, But, you know, I mean, I mean, I love it all, but I, I just enjoy voice work so much because you can really stretch what you're able to do. You know, I'm, I mean, don't awe, but I'm perfect. I'm not a leading man. I'm a character actor. So I'm not going to be the guy that gets the girl unless it's an anime. <laughs> this was actually a, a very much a revelation for me. What you have to do, and what's really very important to do, is you can't go in and think, I'm going to recreate this character. I'm going to do it the way I'd like to do it. I'm going to make it my own. I'm, you can't do that. It's already been done. All you're doing is putting in the English. You can't change his emotion. You can't change his feeling or his, you know, whatever that Japanese actor did. You have to really emulate that. And if you don't, you've changed the story. You know, I mean, imagine if you watched A Few Good Men and Jack Nicholson and Tom Cruise are going, You want answers? I want the truth! You want answers? I want the truth! You can't handle the truth! And then it was dubbed in Spanish and it was like, <laughs> you know, it's like, you've got to be in that emotion. So, I, I, when, when you're going back to your question now, I, I just realized, I remember there was a moment in my life, I just kind of went, oh, and I thought, you know, I cannot change this. I've got to listen to what that actor did and do it and be it. If he's in love, I got to be in love. If he's pissed off, I got to be pissed off. 
because otherwise you've changed the whole feeling of the, the story. So. I have a question. Uh, you keep talking about all your stuff, uh, all the stories about you behind the mic and in front of the mic. But how about your experiences inside, inside the of mic? <laughs> no, in front of the camera! Ah. <laughs> <laughs> Inside, in front of the camera, I, I love in front of the camera. One of my favorite roles of all time was the beer delivery guy in Dazed and Confused. Yeah! You ever saw that movie? I'm the guy that goes, oh, wrong Mr. Pickford altogether. So, yes ma'am. Um, from what you were saying about like you try out for like TV shows, it reminded me of when I found a video a friend of mine showed me of Travis Willingham on Nip Tuck. If you ever saw that, <laughs> I know, know the it. show and I know Travis, but I've not seen Travis on Nip Tuck. Well, apparently, he uh, as I was watching, I'm like, where is he? Oh dear, God. he was the uh, the transvestite in the store. <laughs> do you have standards or do you try out for anything that just looks fun? Aww. Are you asking? Yes. Are you asking if I would be a transvestite? Absolutely. No, I'm just saying, like, if it, if it, like, do you have, like, standards, like, be read it, oh, I don't want to try out because of this, or, like, what'd you do? I have, um, absolutely no standards whatsoever. <laughs> I will do anything. Would you do hentai? Oh. <laughs> have you done hentai? <laughs> would you do it with me? <laughs> I, uh, yeah, I've done a little bit. Right on. I've done, that was, uh, well, it wasn't so much hentai as it was um, a scene in a show where <laughs> Carl, Carl Masick was directing it. It was at ADB. And my character was this badass who gets a little lip service from a female. Woo! And I had to portray the enjoyment of that. <laughs> <laughs> Was that weird, or are you like, I'm God, totally I'm on right this? <laughs> uh, yeah, it was very weird. I mean, you know, oh, God. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay, good shot, you know. You know, yeah, it was super weird. It was uber weird, you know. Especially because you got two guys looking at you going, <laughs> Was it worth seeing this interview? Like yeah, I, I think it was. This man is like your favorite uncle in the family, full of wit and comfort, and you're bound to get a good laugh with every visit. I won't lie, he kind of reminds me of my Uncle Donnie. Look at that, Disneyland. Welcome to the happiest place on earth. No, it's not Disney World, yeesh. This is Walt's real park. What other park in the world can you say you've been to that Walt Disney himself has walked through? This was his dream, and it started here. Okay, you remember that little puny little, it's a small world back at Disney World? Check out this mama. Yeah. Walt Disney knew how to do it. Alright, so you remember the uh, the Toontown Fair back at Disney World. It was cute, very tiny. Um, had one roller coaster there. It had Mickey and Minnie's house. But because of the Fantasyland expansion, they had to take out Toontown Fair. And I was like, oh, well, where's Mickey Mouse supposed to live? Well, you know, people, he, ha he has a house in California. You don't believe me? This is the original Toontown. Not a fair. This is Toontown. Mickey's Toontown. Bar. 
stars. <laughs> you guys are upset that I didn't release the top 32 sexy men of anime fast enough? Oh, come on! You're that upset with me! Should I be talking like Jim Hawking? <laughs> Get it? A bridge? Ha! 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 Yeah, shut up. Say what you want, Disney World. Disneyland will always be the best Disney park in the world.